Hey guys, welcome to MK Tutorial. We're looking at uh, all the excellence questions from 2014 day one. So the first thing you've really got to understand is um, just converting this into equations. Now I'm looking at my first line here. It says Mark had worked twice as many hours as James, right? If in doubt, just make a little table, right? And that's what I like, really like working with because it makes sense. So if I actually say James works for one hour, then how many hours would Mark would have worked for? Two. If James works for two, then Mark would have worked for four. If he works three, it would be six. Now, if I want to write this as an equation, I'll just put little j here. That j stands for the amount of hours James worked, which means Mark would have worked two times j. And that's literally what that first line actually means. Mark has worked twice as many hours as James. We can say m equals to 2j. Now, just putting this one little equation, you start getting your first achieved mark. It's the easiest achieved mark that you can pick up. The second line is where you're going to, where things start getting a bit too complicated almost, but you can simplify. So what it says is, if James had worked another 48 hours, okay, so we've got James, whatever hours he worked, plus 48 hours, because that's what it means, right? James had worked another 48 hours. It says he would have worked twice as long as Mark. Now we're looking at twice as long as Mark. That means if James worked 48 more hours, it would be the same thing as saying Mark working, whatever hours Mark worked, times that by 2. So this is your second equation then. Okay? And that's basically all you need for this, this um, forming the two equations. You form one of these equations, you haven't achieved. Okay? Now let's say you don't know how to do equations. You got no idea how to do equations. You can just guess and check the numbers. Guess and check the numbers would give you an achieved as well. If you guess and check and get the right answer. But anyway, we're going to start um, rearranging this equation. So we have m equals to 2j, which means I can get rid of the m here. So I can rewrite this equation as I've got j plus 48 on the left hand side equals 2. And because m equals to 2j, I can replace that m with 2j. Does that make sense? Yeah? Now it's just a matter of expanding and simplifying, guys. So we have j plus 48 equals 2 times 2 is 4j. Right? Now I need to rearrange so j is by itself. So I'm going to subtract j from both sides. And what I have is 48 equals 3j. Now I need to divide both sides by 3 because I want to have j by itself. So I end up with j equals to 16. Now the question, it's really important you go back to the question and actually see what they're asking. The question is actually asking you how many more hours Mark worked than James. So you got to figure out first how many hours Mark worked. And you can do that because you have this equation here. Because that equation says Mark is equal to 2 times the amount of hours James worked. So we can write this as 2 times 16, which means Mark worked 32 hours. James, he worked 16 hours. So to answer the question, you can say Mark worked 16 hours more than James. All right? Really important that you write that orange statement there. Okay? Writing that statement is important because that's what the question is actually asking you. So, in terms of grades, writing that final bit is going to get you an excellence. All right? Achieved is getting either that equation or that equation. A merit from what I can see is solving, finding M, finding J, or um, what else have they got? Correct conclusion with one equation. So there's a bit of a combination there that you can do. Okay? So even if you don't know an answer to a question, guess and check. Guess and check and write the answer for it because you might get away with an achieved and with the right conclusion, you might even get away with a merit. You never know. Okay, so any questions on this particular question? Should we go on to the next one?
Okay, so that's the uh, first one there. This question here, I guarantee you, someone in this group has done this. They would have seen R squared minus 1, R squared plus R. They saw the two R squareds and went, oh, yeah, I can cancel that, cancel that. All right? And put your final answer as negative 1 over R. Now, don't be shy. Has anyone got an answer here with that one? Yes, thank you. There's always one person that will do this. Yeah, thank you very much. But, um, you know, you are going to, because that is not what I was looking for. What I was actually looking for was, you got to factorize this, all right? You got to factorize the numerator, which means you're going to get R minus 1 and R plus 1. And your denominator, you got to factorize it, and you're going to get R times R plus 1, okay? From this point, can you guys see what's happened? All right? From this point, you cancel out, now you cancel out your R plus 1 and R plus 1. Your final answer is... R minus 1 over R. Okay? This question, guys, if you see it in the exam, you just got to be like, thank, thank the Lord. All right? It's the easiest excellence question you're going to get because this right here is excellence, getting to here. Okay? If you had put this, that's not achieved. Okay? Merit, to get a merit, you got to factorize both the top and the bottom. Okay? And for achieved, if you had just factorized one of them, either the top or the bottom, you would have got an achieved grade for it. Okay? So be very careful with this question. And I guarantee it, there's always somebody that will do this if they don't come to the tutorials, if they don't see this question. Okay. Are we good with this? Can we go on to the next question? Again, if you guys look at the old practice papers, there's heaps of questions like this for you guys to practice as well. All right, next one. Okay, so this question here was quite a unique question in 2014. It only, like, even though there's like three questions there that's written, there was only one grade for this question. Like, you get a whole, like one whole grade for it. So what I would like to do is, I'd like to leave this question up here. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to work on it, and then I'll go through the whole thing, all right? So a couple of minutes. This. So with this question, as I said, what people generally tend to do is um, they look at this equation, and they go, all right, I've got Emma here. So I'm going to put that as Emma's age. They go as, as much as her younger sisters. So that's as much. So I'm going to put S as sister. Plus quarter as much again. All right. So but that basically just means she's going to take the sister's age plus another quarter of her sister's age. Okay. Now, the mistake, the common mistake that I'm seeing people do is they put this as equals. Okay. Now, it's really important that you guys understand this word right here, at least. If it says at least, you can't actually have equals here. You can't have equals. It actually needs to be greater than or equal to. That's what that symbol, that at least means. Okay. Now, if you had done this whole question with equal sign, the highest grade you will get is probably a merit. But by putting that little symbol greater than or equal to, and if you answer the rest of the question correct, you are looking at an excellence. So, how do we go about answering this question? Uh, I've just done the first part there, which is basically writing the equation. Now, I can simplify this if I want. I can say E is greater than or equal to S plus 0.25S, which means I could write this as E is greater than or equal to 1.25s. Is that all right? Now, you don't need to simplify it to 1.25s. If you had just written that first line here, just that first line, that's fine as well. Okay? But you got to have greater than or equal to. Does that make sense, folks? So that's the first part of this question. The second part of the question, they are telling you that Emma's sister's height is 96 centimeters. Find Emma's height which means I've got E greater than or equal to 1.25 times S. Now, if that's too hard to work with, just go back to the original equation, S plus a quarter S. So this could be written as S is 96 plus a quarter of 96. You see what's happened there? So this, I can rewrite this as E is greater than or equal to 96 plus quarter of 96 is, well, half of 96 is 48. 
half of 48 is 24 so that's going to be 24 which means my final statement is going to be e is greater than or equal to 120 centimeters okay now if you had not put that greater than equal to sign and you had done it as e equals to 120 centimeters you're not wrong but just understand your grade's not going to be higher than merit okay because if you go right down to the bottom of the question i don't know if you guys can see at the bottom there but the bottom part of the question says use your answer from c1 to describe in words how emma's height compares with her sister's height now emma is at least 120 centimeters which means you can write two statements here first statement you can say emma is at least 120 centimeter and you can say and or or whatever you want to mix it up with you can say she is at least oh got that wrong she's at least 24 centimeters taller than her sister okay so as i said guys this final statement there is you got to have for excellence you got to have the equation correct okay so you have to have the equation and the statement that's what you need for excellence for merit if you forget that greater than or equal to sign and you kind of just put it equals so you actually say emma is 120 centimeters or emma is 24 centimeters taller than her sister then you're probably looking at a merit there okay that's the difference between that's how much this one little word affects the entire question that at least okay so if you see at least at most greater than less than you're most likely working with one of these symbols all right at least it's greater than or equal to question yep that's fine 5 over 4s is 1.25 that's fine any other questions guys so again for achieved if you had just guessed an answer i think you might actually get uh, let's see statement given equality uh, there's a lot of combinations guys for the answers but um i think even if you had just put e equals to 120 uh you could just a calculation of that just finding emma's age is 120 i'm talking about right here if you had just done that you could get an achieved as well for that okay and if you've written a statement saying emma is 120 centimeters you get a merit for it okay should we go to the next question all right so with this question you've basically been given this equation here all right and you're told that there's 20 diagonals so that means capital d equals 20 and you're trying to figure out what n is what the, how many sides this polygon has so the first step is actually writing this down so you've got 20 equals n over 2 n minus 3 that's the first step okay from here you want to rear like looking at this and i want you guys particularly to pay attention to these two ends here because when you multiply those two ends you're going to get n squared okay if you're going to get n squared you're dealing with a quadratic which means you got to rearrange everything so you can put one side equal to zero factorize solve that's basically all you got to do all right so what you want to do is you want to write this equation so it looks something like n squared plus something n plus something equals zero that's what you want to get it to okay so that's what i'm going to do here so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get rid of this two here to get rid of the two i multiply both sides by two so what i have is 40 equals n times n minus 3. now really important that you actually expand this because remember we're trying to get to it to look something like what's in that orange box there or yellow box so i can rewrite this as 40 equals n squared minus 3n because all i've done is i've just expanded the brackets now i move 40 to the other side so this becomes 0 n squared minus 3n minus 40 okay now guess what this is starting to look like something you can actually do because you can factorize this 
When you factorize this, you've got n and n. Basically, what two numbers that multiply to minus 40 and add to minus 3? I mean, this is something you guys got to just keep working on. I'm just going to do mine real quickly. You got minus 8 and plus 5. Okay? So getting to this stage here, uh, getting to this stage here, minus 8 plus 5, incorrectly factorize or guess and check. Okay. So getting to this stage here, equation factorize and equals to 0. This actually gets you to a merit just to get to this stage. For achieved equation rearrange, I'm guessing here it's probably achieved. So from here, you need to put it equals to 0. So you got n minus 8 equals to 0 or n plus 5 equals to 0, which means n equals to 8, n equals to minus 5. Okay, those are your two answers. Now, this is the part where you need to finish the question off. Can you actually have an eight-sided polygon? It's called an octagon, right? Can you actually have a negative five-sided polygon? No. So that means it's really important that you say n can't be n equals to eight because n can't be negative. Okay. So that means you're actually working with an eight-sided polygon. And it's really important that you say this because that's what's going to get you an excellence. If you don't say it, you just put down n equals 8 and n equals negative 5, you're only going to get a merit. I mean, it's just a one extra little bit of thinking you need to do. All right? So it's not that hard, is it? I mean, it's just remember, you're going to end up with a quadratic. You're going to solve the quadratic. And that's basically it. And then your final answer, you got to think, does this make sense? Okay. Do we have any questions about that, guys? Yeah. You talking about guessing and checking? It does, right? Yeah. That's fine. That That's correct. But you're guessing and checking, though. No, guessing and checking would only give you an achieve for this question. So, this goes back... Sorry? Yes? No, you don't need to check with both. Because this, the negative 5, you can't actually have a negative 5-sided polygon. It'll still work. Like, you'll still get 20 as one of your numbers. But it's you, you just say you ignore the negative number because you can't actually have a negative n-sided polygon. But if you put the 8 in there, you're right. Because 8 over 2 times 8 minus 3, you got 4 times 5 is 20. So it does work. But if you had done just this here, you're only going to get achieved. You have to show this part here to actually get to an excellence. Okay? But again, for people that are aiming, like, you know, if you're nervous about doing the whole thing just guess and check guessing and checking might give you if you get a right answer you might get an achieved with it does that kind of answer your question yeah so you can't just do whatever is in that little blue box there that that won't be enough that won't be enough because that's considered guessing and checking any other questions guys we're good okay let's go to the next one eh? particularly with r if you expand these two brackets and if you get that right you might you'll get an achieved or if you expand these two brackets just get that part you might get achieved as well so I'm just gonna look at R first so R equals 5 n minus 4 n plus 1 minus 2 n times 2 n plus 3 plus 4 times n plus 1 minus 3 now first step is this 5n times n is 5n squared. 5n times 1 is 5n. Then I got negative 4 times n is negative 4n. Negative 4 times plus 1 is negative 4. So that's the first part. The second part, negative 2n times 2n is negative 4n. Negative 2n times 6 is... Thank you, 4n squared. I got negative 6n. Okay? And now looking at the last part, uh, 4 times n is 4n, 
4 times 1 is plus 4. Plural minus 3 is there by itself. So, if you have one of those, either the blue part right or the light blue part right, just one of them, you're going to get an achieved. Okay? For a merit, you need to simplify this. So, looking at collecting like terms, 5n squared minus 4n squared is going to be n squared. Next, I'm looking at 5n, 4, negative 4n, negative 6n, and another 4n. So this would become negative n. Okay? Because I've got 4 and 4 cancels, negative 6 and 5 is negative 1. Finally, looking at the numbers by themselves, I've got negative 4 and plus 4 is 0. I've got negative 3 left over. So this is what my simplified uh, equation expression is going to look like. This simplified, fully simplified, gets you a merit. Okay, so watch what I do here, guys. There's two ways I'm going to do this question for you so you get an idea. First off, R equals, we've got R equals N squared minus N minus 3. The second thing is we got T equals N squared minus N plus 5. Now, they're asking you to write an equation for R in terms of T. So what I can do is, if you remember simultaneous equations, I could just go the top equation minus the bottom equation, which means R minus T is going to be written just like that. There's nothing going to happen to it. I can't do anything to it. N squared minus N squared is 0. Negative N minus negative N, 0. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Now remember they are asking R in terms of T, so I just rearrange this. R equals T minus 8. That's one way of doing it for an excellence. I'm going to show you another method. Watch this method. You got R equals N squared minus N minus 3. And you've got T equals N squared minus N plus 5. Now, there should be something common in both of these things. You've got N squared minus N here. And you've got N squared minus N there. So what I can do is I can write this as n squared minus n equals r plus 3. And on this side, I could write n squared minus n equals t minus 5. Does that make sense? So all, all it means is because this two things are equal to each other, I can write now r plus 3 equals t minus 5. And if I rearrange this, I'm going to get r equals t minus 5 minus 3, so R equals T minus 8. Okay? So it's just understanding how to manipulate your variables. Why is it T minus 5? Because when I move the plus 5 from here to the other side, it becomes minus 5. Shamal? Why is minus 8 plus 5? Oh, you're talking about here, why is minus 3 plus 5? Because this is actually minus 3, minus 5. So it's negative 3, minus 5, negative 8. Okay, guys. I've got the last question to go next. And I'm, I'm looking at the time. We've only got a couple of minutes. So i got to go it fairly quickly. Or do you guys want to actually watch it in the actual video that I sent earlier this morning? So with the last question here, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the time. I've just got to rush through this, all right? But if you have any questions, just flick me a message and I'm happy to help you out with this. So the question is asking, explain why T will never give a prime number for a value of, well, you'll never get a prime number. The first thing you want to do is, even if you don't know what how, the, how you're going to approach this question, if you see a quadratic, factorize it. Okay, Factorizing it, you might actually get an achieved grade from it. So and that's what I'm going to do the first thing here. I'm going to factorize this. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to minus 6 and add to minus 1. So in this case, it's going to be minus 3 and plus 2. That straight away gives you an achieved grade. Even though it's an excellence question, you can get an achieved grade from it if you don't answer it. So the way we go about this question, you need to understand what a prime number is. 
for you to have a prime number, the factors, one of the factors have to be 1, and the second factor has to be the number itself. Okay? So one factor has to equal 1 if you want to get a prime number. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put first up, because I have n minus 3 as one factor, n plus 2 is another factor. So if I actually put n minus 3 equals to 1, then I'm going to get n is equal to 4. Okay, what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to prove one of the brackets has to equal 1. Then if the other uh, bracket is a prime number, uh, or just a number, then I can figure out if it's a prime number or, or not. So when I do this, I'm going to get 4 minus 3 times 4 plus 2, because n is equal to 4. In this case, my first bracket is a 1. My second bracket is a 6. Now, 6 times 1 is 6. Is this a prime number? So that means we can't actually have n minus 3 equals to 1. It doesn't, it's not going to work. So let's try the other one. If I say I've got n minus 3 and n plus 2, let's put n plus 2 equals to 1. n would become negative 2 plus 1, therefore n is equal to negative 1. Now, if I put this in the brackets, I've got negative 1 minus 3 times negative 1 plus 2. Doing this, I get negative 4 for one of my brackets, and my other bracket is positive 1. Now, negative 4 times 1 is going to be negative 4. Is this a prime number? Is 4 a prime number? No, because you can actually have 1 times 4, and then you can have 2 times 2. So it's not a prime number. So we've basically shown that out of the two methods here, it's not possible for the t to be prime number. So you just kind of say that. Uh, if one factor equals one, then uh, other factor is not a prime number. Is not a prime number. So therefore, t can never be prime. Now guys, the other thing you can do is you can actually guess and check this as well. You can put some values for n and actually guess and check. That's another way you could do it as well. All right. But you need to actually do some sort of justification. And this question is quite useful for you guys if they actually pull out a prime number anywhere. So <clears throat> excellence, that's where you're looking at. Uh, but you kind of have a rough idea about this, but not fully justifying it. You're probably looking at a merit. But even if you don't know how to answer this question, try and see if you can factorize and get something out of it. Okay? All right. That's us for today, guys. Thank you for coming. And, um, yeah, just keep an eye out on the channel. You get more videos. I'll try and put up a couple more next week if I have some time, yeah? All right. Thanks again for coming.